Today's lesson is called the race between Atalanta and Hippomenes. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff. My name is Roger, and today we've got a story from Greek mythology. It's all about a race that took place, and it's interesting because this race was not between a rabbit and a tortoise, or between a couple of、uh, top-flight Olympic male athletes or female ones, but actually this race was between a man and a woman. The battle of the sexes, but、uh, of course, as you know, in Greek mythology. There were some other things involved. There's always many levels of depth in Greek myths. Anyways, the name of the myth is the race between Atalanta and Hippomenes, and we'll start reading about this right after a short break. The race between Atalanta and Hippomenes. King Iasus had long dreamed of having a son who would inherit his lands. So when he discovered his newborn child was female, he hastily abandoned her on a distant mountain. The child's wails drew the attention of a mother bear, but rather than devour the child, the bear nursed her and kept her alive until she was found by a band of hunters. The men gave her the name Atalanta and raised her, teaching her their skills until she was a fierce hunter in her own right. 大家好，第一部分我们看到单字 newborn 这个字是形容词，意思是新生的。例如 ，There are three newborn infants in the hospital's nursery. 那间医院的育婴室里有三个刚出生的婴儿。接着，我们看到副词 hastily， 指匆忙的、仓促的。例如 ，Sharon hastily grabbed her bag and ran out the door. Sharon 匆忙的抓起她的包包冲出门。另外，这个字去掉字尾 i l y。加上 e n 就成了动词 hasten， 指催促、加速。像是 Some politicians of that country believe tax cuts will hasten economic recovery. 该国有些政治人物认为减税将可加速经济复苏。再来，我们看到单字 wail 这个字是名词，指哀嚎、痛哭声。举例来说 ，The victim's mother wailed at the funeral. 罹难者的母亲在丧礼上痛哭。另外，除了上面的意思，这个字还可以指警笛等尖啸声，像是 I could hear the wail of a police car as it raced to respond to an emergency call. 我听到警车鸣笛，赶去处理一通紧急报案电话。接下来，我们看到形容词 fierce， 指强悍的、凶猛的、激烈的。例如 ，This will be a fierce storm, so make sure you are prepared for it. 这会是一个很强烈的暴风雨。所以你要做好准备，或是 the fierce bull would not let anyone come into its field. 那头凶猛的公牛不会让任何人进入它的势力范围。Okay, so we start this story off with King. Iasus. Okay, he had long dreamed of having a son who would inherit his lands. So when he discovered his newborn child was female, he hastily abandoned her on a distant mountain. Ooh, that doesn't sound like a very nice king there. But in a lot of cultures, of course, they like their sons. They want the son to carry on the family name. So he wanted to have a son so that his son would inherit his lands. Okay, here we've got the verb to inherit. That means you basically get something from your parents or your grandparents when they die. Then it becomes yours. A family business, for example, will involve an inheritance when your father. Father dies or whatever, then you inherit the company and you are the boss now. Yeah, when I was growing up, my dad always told me, "You better be a good boy, or one day I will write you out of my will and you will inherit nothing." Oh no! No, he never said that. But yes, when someone dies, they usually leave a will. Okay, that's a document that tells you what they want done with their possessions and their money and stuff like that. And let's say there's something set aside for you. That's what you. Inherit 
when that person dies. So we've got a king here. He has a kid, and he learns that the newborn child, this is a newly born child or a newborn child, when he learns that this child is a girl or female, he hastily or immediately, very quickly, without thinking about things, without being too organized, he hastily abandoned her on a distant mountain, i.e. he took her to this mountain, he rushed there, and he left her there, and he had no intention whatsoever of coming back and retrieving her. That's what it means to abandon someone or something somewhere. You take it to some place and you leave it there to its own devices. You're not coming back to rescue it. He just did this quickly, maybe so nobody else could discover this action. And the child's wails drew the attention of a mother bear. But rather than devour the child, the bear nursed her and kept her alive until she was found by a band of hunters. So, as you might expect, when a baby is placed on a distant mountain, it's going to be cold, and there's not going to be any food there. So the child's going to cry, and if you cry really badly or cry really loudly, you might wail. You will wail, and of course, the wails of the child, the loud cries of the child, were noticed by a mother bear who just happened to be passing by. Gee, I'm a bear, you know, and、uh, that's a human baby, but.、Uh, You know, I don't like to see babies suffer. I've got those motherly instincts. So, yes, instead of eating the child, the bear decided to keep her alive. The bear nursed her back to health, and so here. But rather than instead of eating the child, the bear actually took care of the baby. There you go. The child was crying, and a bear came by, and instead of eating the kid. Which would only be natural. Well, this mother bear nursed this child and kept her alive until the child was found by a band of hunters, and the men gave her the name Atalanta and raised her, teaching her their skills until she was a fierce hunter. In her own right, so there you go. She became a fierce hunter. That means. You do not want to mess with her. If someone is fierce, they are aggressive. They're willing to attack, and they can probably defend themselves without a problem. They're like a wild animal, very fierce.、Arr. Anyway, she was a fierce hunter in her own right. She wasn't just a good hunter because she was a part of this group of hunters. No, no, no. She herself was a skilled and fierce hunter herself. She was fierce, strong, kind of like an Amazon woman. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson. Let's move on now to the second part. When Atalanta came of age, she visited a temple to consult an oracle about her future. The oracle offered her a warning: should she ever marry, she would be doomed. This prediction, however, was not known by the countless suitors who, prompted by Atalanta's wild beauty and impressive talents, sought her hand in marriage. 第二部分我们看到单字 consult 这个字是动词，指请教、请示、商议。我们可以说 You should consult a dictionary before using a word you're unsure of. 在你使用不确定意思的字之前，应该先查字典。或是 Pablo wanted to consult with his father before making a decision. Pablo 想跟父亲商量后再做决定。另外，除了上面的意思，这个字还可以表示当顾问。例如 ，The expert on ancient Egypt consulted on the museum for their upcoming exhibition. 这位古埃及专家为这间博物馆接下来的展览担任顾问。接着，我们看到动词 doom， 指毁灭，注定失败。我们可以说。Paul's negative attitude often dooms him to failure. Paul's 消极的态度常让他注定会失败。另外，补充一个相关片语 ，be doomed to， 加动词或名词，表示注定要点点点。举例来说 ，The ancient city of Pompeii was doomed to be destroyed by a nearby volcano. 
。古老的庞贝城注定要被邻近的火山毁灭，或是 The negotiation was doomed to failure because neither side was willing to back down. 这个谈判注定要失败，因为没有一方愿意让步。Okay, so we just learned the story of Atlanta and where she kind of came from. Okay, now. Atalanta, she is now a fierce hunter in her own right, and she has come of age, or she's grown up. And when Atalanta came of age, she visited a temple to consult an oracle about her future. Yes, this happens in Greek myths. People go to a temple and they ask an oracle or a fortune teller. About their future, what's going to happen to me in the future? And yes, she did this when she became a young lady. When she came of age, this is what she did. She visited this temple and she consulted the oracle. Like a lot of people consult fortune tellers to find out about their future. So here she talked to the oracle, and the oracle offered her a warning. Okay, so the oracle knew something about Atalanta's future. The oracle said, "Should she ever marry, she would be doomed." So here, "should" just means if. If she ever got married to someone, well, it would be a bad decision because she would be doomed. If you're doomed, that means something terrible is going to happen to you because you did something wrong. Okay, so maybe if you insult your god and your religion, you might be doomed. You might be doomed to hell. They might send you to hell, so you'll burn forever. If you insult your god, you might be doomed. So in this particular case, yeah, if she were to get married, she would. Have a very difficult future. She might even die or be tortured. One way or another, if she got married, things would not turn out well for her. She would be doomed. Her fate would be sealed, and only bad things would happen to her. Now, there's more. This prediction, however, was not known by the countless suitors who, prompted by Atalanta's. Wild beauty and impressive talents sought her hand in marriage. So, Atalanta, she has come of age, and she's beautiful and fearsome and talented and a great hunter. So, there are a lot of people who are saying, "Hey, I want to marry you. You are awesome. You are something special." These are all suitors, by the way, and they don't know this, so they are seeking her hand in marriage. By the way, if you seek someone's hand in marriage, you want to marry them. You are trying to get them to marry you. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson for today. It's now time for us to go on to the third part. In hopes of discouraging these men. Atalanta came up with a test they needed to pass before she would marry them. They had to beat her in a foot race. Should they lose, she would kill them. Atalanta's superior athletic ability made victory unlikely for her suitors, and many died trying to best her. Finally, the third part, we see the word "athletic." This word is a descriptive word, meaning an athlete or an athlete. 我们可以说 ，Ariel is quite good at most athletic activities. Ariel 颇擅长大部分的体育活动，或是 Kim looks athletic, but she's not good at sports. Kim 看起来是运动型的人，但她对运动并不在行。Okay, so Atalanta, she's got a problem. She went and she consulted the oracle there, and the oracle said, "If she gets married, she's doomed." Here's the problem, though. Atalanta, she's beautiful and talented, and a lot of people want to marry her. She's got a lot of suitors. They're all seeking her hand in marriage. So. What can she do? I guess she's going to have to discourage these men. By the way, if you dis 
discourage someone, you kind of keep them from doing that thing. Okay, let's say they were enthusiastic about that thing, you kind of dampen that enthusiasm a little bit. Okay, you cause that person to lose enthusiasm in something. So it says next, in hopes of discouraging these men, Atalanta came up with a test they needed to pass before she would marry them. They had to beat her in a foot race. So there you go. They all knew that she was a great hunter and really super athletic. So they thought, oh man, I'm not going to lose in a foot race to a woman. Not only will I be humiliated, but then I can't marry her as well. Oh goodness, forget it. And she thought, hey, this will work. This will discourage these suitors. Yep, they probably won't want to compete against her in a foot race for fear of losing and losing face and stuff like that. And、uh, and don't forget、uh, they would lose face, and also、uh, should they lose, she would kill them. I, for- I forgot to tell you that. I Ooh, forgot to add that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big discouragement. They, they would、there. lose face and、yeah. uh, and then die. Yeah, yeah I'd、uh, like to race against a woman just like the next guy, you know. But gee, if I have to die at the end of the race. I don't want that to happen to me. So yeah, you guys can race against her. I'll just sit in the sidelines and watch the race. Go ahead. And I think that was probably a good plan there by discouraging those men. You can race me, but if you lose, hey, you're gonna die. So yeah, who would want to participate in a race like that? Well, Atalanta's superior athletic ability made victory unlikely for her suitors, and many died trying to best her. Wow. I guess I got some、uh, respect for those guys, even though they were going to die. They still decided to compete. I guess they thought that the prize was worth dying for. But、uh, unfortunately for them, she had superior athletic ability. Athletic means having to do with sports. So she was a good runner. She could probably, you know, run a two-hour marathon really easily.、Uh, do you know, 400 meter hurdles in less than 20 seconds or something like that. She was quite the athlete. Yes, if you have. Superior athletic ability—that means you're capable of playing sports better than most people. You might be the best athlete in your school. Let's say if you have superior athletic ability. When I was growing up, there was a basketball player in our school, and he was recruited by college scouts from all over the country. Because that person had superior athletic ability, I was a pretty good athlete. But there was nobody scouting me. No one was going to give me a scholarship to come play sports at their college. But this person was an amazing athlete. They were really, really good at playing basketball. They had superior athletic. Ability. Well, poor you, but、uh, hey, that's good for the rest of us because you're now not a professional athlete on some team in the USA somewhere. You're here teaching English with us in good old Taiwan. But in any case, here, of course, lots of these guys died trying to best her. Here we've got the word "best," which often refers to someone. Who is the best? Who is the most superior in a particular sport or academic pursuit or something? I'm the best juggler in the circus, you could say, for example. But in this particular case, "best" is being used as a verb. Basically, it just means they were trying to defeat her, trying to beat her, but they all died trying. Those poor suitors. Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Let's now listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第三部分的第一句写道 ：In hopes of discouraging these men, Atlanta came up with a test they needed to pass before she would marry them. 好，这边有三个重点。第一个是 in hopes 的用法 ，in hopes 或者是 in the hope。或者是 in hope 后面都可以加 that 子句，或者是去接 of 加上名词或动名词，表达说期盼什么，抱持着什么样的希望。举例来说 ，Brad and his wife moved to the countryside 
in the hope that they could lead a quiet life. Brad 和他的妻子搬到乡下住，希望能过着宁静的生活。那我们再造一个例句 ：He started jogging every day in hopes of losing weight. 他开始每天慢跑，希望把体重减下来。好，那么第二个重点呢是 come up with， 这是表达想到、想出。那这个片语常常用来表达想出新的点子、提出新的构想、想到解决方案等等。例如 ，Mary came up with a brilliant idea to solve the problem. Mary 想到一个很棒的点子来解决那个问题。那么第三个重点是，文中有用到单字 discourage， 它是表达劝阻、打消什么的念头、使什么灰心的意思。我们来学它的字首字根。好，首先看到 c o u r 或者是 c o r d 这一类的字根，它是源自于拉丁文，表示心、心思或是勇气。像 courage 就是由字根 c o u r 加上名词字尾 a g e 而来，用来表达。勇气。好，那我们接着在 courage 前面加上字首 d i s， 就会变成 discourage。那么这个 d i s 的字首呢，就有分离呀、啊、否定或者是剥夺等等的否定意思。那我们试着去想，当一个人的勇气被剥夺了，他的勇气跟他这个人就分离了。应该很容易想到说 discourage 有使什么沮丧、灰心的意思。好，那顺便补充几个有这类字根的单字。第一个是 encourage， 同学们应该知道它有鼓励的意思。好，那它的字首 e n 有 make。或者是 put into 的意思，表达使什么，或者是加诸。那么字根 c o u r 表示勇气，而 a g e 是名词字尾，所以合在一起 encourage 就是表达鼓励、激励的意思喽。第二个补充的是 cordial, c o r d i a l. 好，那么它的字根 c o r d 表示心，那么 i a l 是形容词字尾，把它合在一起。cordial 就是用来形容是真挚的、热诚的、友好的，就好像你是用心去跟人家相处的那种感觉。好，那么第三个补充的是 discord, d i s c o r d. discord 它的字首 d i s 表示相反。那么字根 c o r d 表示心思，心思不一致，应该就很容易联想到 discord， 它有争吵、不和，或是看法不一致、缺乏共识的意思。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们来回顾今天单词吧。Inherit. Jane's brothers argued about who should inherit their father's watch. Hastily. Leon hastily wiped up the milk he had spilled on the floor. Abandon. When he moved to an apartment that didn't allow pets, Cole abandoned his dog. Wail, loud wails could be heard coming from the hospital room. Fierce, Mike Tyson is well known for being one of the fiercest boxers in American history. Consult, if the pain doesn't go away in a couple of days, you should consult a doctor. Discourage, Melissa tried to discourage her boyfriend from accepting the job offer from the overseas company. Athletic, stretching before you exercise can help improve athletic performance. Well, everyone, today's article has come to an end, and I sure hope you guys enjoyed reading and learning along with us. I am Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next time. time.